Oh boy, it's happening. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Zach with Dr. Eyeball on D. And we're starting back on the cataract rotation. I know you guys are probably as excited as I am. So I'm gonna take you guys along. We have eight cataract surgeries tomorrow. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I had six scheduled. I pushed them to give me eight. They gave me eight because I like operating and I wanted to do more surgery. So I've already gone through all the cases. We have one toric. We have the rest monofocals, one post hyperopic LASIK patient. It's gonna be fun, gonna be good cases. I reorganized and downsized back to my original tiny bag, which I spend way too much time packing out to make sure. It is the most organized, most beautiful, best camera bag, best ophthalmology bag out there. I got my loops, got some supplies here, got my speaker, my little Sony speaker for the OR. We're gonna be listening to 80s retro in the OR tomorrow, I've decided. And then I have this. This is cool. If you buy a Yeti, uh, like little container for a can. It comes with this fake can and then the fake cans are uh, good little containers. So I actually use these. It's gonna be cool because I'm going to be doing the vlog tomorrow with this, which is actually really cool. It is a DJI Osmo Pocket 2. So it's cool little vlogging camera that has a little gimbal stabilization. So hopefully it won't be such shaky footage and stuff uh, like when I use my iPhone. This little microphone with it that I mounted to a uh, direct ophthalmoscope for interview style things uh, for asking other ophthalmologist questions and interviewing them. Gonna take you guys along for the ride. We're gonna do the surgery. We're gonna look at the videos. We'll go through some of the cool highlights from the videos. Day in the life ophthalmology resident who is finally back doing what he loves. Cataract surgery. One of the things he loves. All right, let's go. Okay, <clears throat> 6.45 now and headed in. We'll get the first patient marked and it's gonna be monofocal lens. Got all the stuff in my car to take with me. It's gonna be a good day, gonna be fun. I have something to stay hydrated. I always get so dehydrated. I'm not gonna have time to eat lunch. Um, there's no food at this surgery center that I know of. Um, so it's gonna be a long day of not eating. So I had a protein drink and then hopefully we'll be good. So it's very staff dependent on what I'm actually allowed to do in terms of technique. You know, some, some of the staff will basically let you just have free reign and do kind of whatever you want to do. Um, and then some are a little more uh, structured in the way that they want you to do the surgery. And so you may have to end up doing it in a certain technique or, you know, kind of their way. So we'll just see how it goes. My, my hope today is to get to do some stop and chop. So basically like making a groove down the middle, using the chopper to split it without rotating. So getting a good groove initially and then splitting the nucleus in the halves without having to rotate it. Uh, and then bringing up the pieces as hemi-nuclei and either just eating them or going ahead and chopping, uh, sub-chopping them. Um, so that would be the goal. Um, in my quest to get closer to uh, being able to do like a primary chop. Okay, we're at the surgery center. So, I have to pick a scrub hat. I'm gonna go with the eyeball scrub hat, which is my favorite. One of my favorites. I made the other one. So, um, we'll head inside, put scrubs on, mark the first patient, um, do the history and physical, and then go get the lens, make sure everything's good to go, and go from there. All right, let's jump into the first case. Here we go, making the paracentesis. I've sped this case up, and I'll just show you guys a few of the cases uh, so we're not here all day. But I make that paracentesis, um, and then go ahead, check the anesthetic, and then the viscoelastic into the eye, check the pressure, raise that pressure a little bit, um, and then we're going to go ahead and make the main wound. Use those point one two care, uh, for forceps to stabilize the eye, and make my best uh, attempt at a triplanar incision, slightly lick, uh, nicking those limbal vessels. And then I'll go in with the um, 
cystotome here to start the rexus and having to do it one-handed here because the patient was moving a lot and so stabilizing the eye with the 0.12s while I start the rexus there. Um, as you can see, they're moving moving around a decent bit. Um, going in with the utrata forceps and then I'll go ahead and bring that rexus out to a more workable size here and try to be careful with those really dilated pupils not to overdo the rexus, um, although it is a bit on the smaller side here probably. So it could have made it a slightly bit bigger size. However, in the end, I think we'll see that it comes out uh, with a decent overlap of the optic. So go in now with a little bit of hydrodissection, BSS on a cannula, get a good fluid wave there, and tap tap down the nucleus, and then it spins well. Going to go in with the FACO handpiece, and we'll do a stop and chop technique, I believe is what I did on this first case. So um, what we'll do is go in and groove down the middle to begin with, flip it over, bevel up, uh, make our initial groove and then we'll use a Cybell chopper to split the nucleus. I used to use kind of a, uh, I used to use a, um, a Drysdale, which is like a paddle instrument, and then push the pieces apart, but I've been using the Cybell chopper now to pull the pieces apart, kind of, there it is. Uh, we'll go in through the pair with it, and then I'll use that to actually, uh, you know, pull it into hemi-nuclei. Uh, so go down, dig into the bottom there, and boop and split it and we get a decent split there and then you know not having to rotate the nucleus in the beginning to further that initial groove just getting a good groove from the beginning and then I'm gonna try to pull out a hemi nucleus here it doesn't want to come um, I think one of the problems here is I'm not pushing the other hemi nucleus out of the way to give it room to come up uh, so I'm kind of working at it here to get it out eventually get it there it is uh, and then just emulsify that whole hemi nucleus there and that's satisfying um, bring that other hemi-nucleus around into a more acceptable position to pull it out. Grab it there toward its end. Get that kind of edge of the hemi-nucleus from underneath the rexus and pull the whole thing up. Um, and then just emulsify it. This was the first case of the day, and uh, it ended up being about a 12-minute case. 11 and a half minute or something case. Um, and she was 2015 minus 1 on day 1, so... Excellent vision post-operatively. Uh, we'll go ahead and go in with the eye handpiece next, and I'll take out some of the cortex, or rather all of the cortex, and uh, do, probably do a little bit of polishing as well. Um, get our bag nice and ready for a new acrylic intraocular lens. It's a monofocal in this patient. Um, and she was very happy with vision on post-operative day one. Fill the eye up with a little bit of provisc. It's a little off-centered there. Not, I don't have the scope completely centered perfectly. Uh, but remember to dive down into the bag when you fill it up with provisc or uh, your cohesive viscoelastic. And then go in with your lens. Slight rotation of the hand to the left as it unfolds. And then see here, don't use the Maloney. You don't have to really dial the optic into place with the Maloney. Just go in with the eye handpiece if you want and push it into the bag uh, as it's unfolding. Um, if you do want to rotate it to go behind the lens, that's perfectly fine. You may want to use a Maloney for that, and I do sometimes, but here I didn't. A little bit of hydration of the wound, uh, just hydrating the roof there, as you can see, um, so that uh, it closes. Don't, don't have to do those gigantic bunny ears, uh, but you can. Uh, so decent looking, and that will wrap up our first case. Good start to the day, checking the pressure, and really good, perfect. Um, good overlap of the optic, like I said. You know, no issues there. It's not too small of a rex, I don't think. So, good first case, and we will move on. Guys, by the way, this is future Zach, just urging you to go check out the podcast On Call with Dr. Keenum. have new episodes every Monday morning talking about medicine, the darker sides of medicine, some cool things. So check that out on Spotify, on Apple Podcast, On Call with Dr. Keenum. Let's get back to the video. Okay, we did the first case. That was fast. We did it topical. She was pretty nervous, had a tremor, but was able to stabilize the eye and get through it pretty quickly. Sometimes just getting through it quickly when they're nervous is easier. So, excellent case, lens in the bag, everything looked good. Um, really good start to the day, so get ready for the second case. Okay, we're getting ready to do the third case. Um, patient with a macular hole whose retina is gonna do surgery on. So we're doing the, the FACO for them uh, prior to the vitrectomy, so it should be good. Okay, so for the anesthetic, I make a mixture, half and half, 1% lidocaine and epinephrine. All right, let's do the next case. Going ahead and marking the eye here for a toric lens. So putting the axis where I want, 
And using a Q-tip now to kind of get, provide counter traction to stabilize the eyes, I make that initial paracentesis. Um, rather than grabbing the conjunctiva with a uh, with the 0.12 forceps, we do a little blue here because the cortical component. Um, fill the eye with fiscal elastic, make the main wound, and go for that triplanar incision. A little shorter side on the wound there. I'm just going to be careful with that because you can burp out a lot of the visco elastic as you're making uh, as you're making the rectus, and then if you over burp it out, then it's going to want to run out on you. So just be careful um, and keep that in mind if you make a shorter wound. So uh, getting a decent capsular rectus here, trying my best to pivot in the incision uh, to burp as little of that visco elastic out of the eye as possible, um, and again a little on the smaller side here, but I think that will work. We get a little prolapse there and uh, give it a little spin. And we'll go in with our FACO handpiece once again. And for this one, I'm going to clean up a little bit of that cortical material that kind of fluffed up, just so we can see. And going uh, going for that initial groove once again um, here in the beginning. So I, I've started trying to move away from this a little bit here recently and go for a little more of a, uh, a chop technique from the beginning. But this is more of a uh, trying... Uh, a little more of a stop and chop and sometimes divide and conquer. So here, going ahead and doing a little chop there. So you see I went in uh, and kind of dived under the rexus and chopped that first piece, best of my ability at least. And then, you know, bring out those pieces and then we'll take out that hemi-nucleus. And boop, 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 it is out of the eye. So no more nucleus, which is ideal. Um, obviously I've sped this case up, uh, but still, you know, operating at a, a more decent speed, getting more efficient. So. Speed, remember, is not the goal. Efficiency is the goal and smooth movements. So that's what I'm going for. Cleaning up the uh, rest of the cortex here, doing a little polishing. We have some wispy cortex that's left over. And uh, once we get that done, we will put in our toric lens and make a happy patient. All right, going in with that lens. And, you know, with these torics, it's good to try to kind of dial it in uh, before it completely the haptics completely unfold so getting it a little under rotated there uh, just so that if it wrote if it moves you know while I'm taking out the visco elastic and as you can see there I went behind the lens uh, because I don't want a torque to rotate at all so I want it to be sticky to the posterior capsule uh, and then kind of dialing it in uh, a decent amount of overlap there that Rex is probably could have been a little bit bigger but uh, but you know it's not gonna hurt to make sure that toric stays in place um, and this patient was seen really well post-operative day one. So uh, good case overall. And just kind of repositioning it there with the BSS cannula and injecting as I do that so the uh, anterior chamber does not collapse. Uh, remember, just inject with the cannula as you are going in and, uh, and repositioning the, the IOL. All right, and I will show you one more case. I ended up doing six, but I'm just going to show you three. Uh, so this isn't an hour-long video. Again, uh, dense PSC, posterior subcapsular cataract here, as you can see, right in the middle. Um, using the, I use the Q-tip for counter-traction. We put a little anesthetic into the eye. Fill the eye, get that good wave going across the anterior chamber. Bring it back, get a good wave of viscoelastic to coat the endothelium. Decent pressure, and then I'm going to use the 0.12 forceps to stabilize. You can use the... Um, you can use the viscoelastic cannula to stabilize the eye and not come out, which is a technique I've been trying. Uh, making a decent paracentesis, and this guy's moving around quite a lot, um, trying to get him to focus on the light. And then what we're going to do here is go ahead and start our, our capsular rexus. But again, remember, if they're not focusing, you got to help them. you got to coach them, and you got to uh, stabilize the eye if they're not going to do it. So that is one of the downsides of topical. But trying to learn how to do topical cases, do them well and efficiently, uh, less time you can spend, you know, messing around on an eye, the uh, the less time they have to be stressed out. So, um, getting our rexus going here. Obviously, that PSC is making it a little tough to see, uh, but we get a decent rexus, and uh, we'll bring it around town, make it into the best circle we can. This is a really soft lens. This was a young patient, and we actually ended up zero using zero CDEs, so uh, no phaco energy at all on. Uh, on this this lens just because of how soft it is so we'll go in we'll hydro dissect we get a good fluid wave tap tap down the nucleus and uh, it, because it prolapsed like that I know it's gonna I know it's gonna spin if I need it to um, and I actually left it a little bit prolapsed uh, convinced town staff I don't need to push that back down into the bag 
uh, went in with a little viscoelastic to coat the endothelium, protect that central corneal endothelium. And uh, I'm just going to work on kind of pulling it out of the bag, you know. This isn't necessarily, it, it's sort of a, uh, I guess it's sort of a tilt and chop or a tilt and tumble technique where I'm just trying to get it out of the bag and just eat it and essentially aspirate it. You don't need any phaco energy. It's so soft. Um, I'm not really looking to divide and conquer this. I don't even really want to stop and chop it just because I don't want to lollipop through that, that soft nuclear material and go through the bag. So I'm just looking to pull it out. We use zero CDEs. This ended up being a really fast, really efficient case. And uh, just like that, it's out of the nucleus, is uh, out of the bag and out of the eye. Um, so we'll take out some of that cortex now. And we'll put a lens in his eye. And he was seeing really well on post-operative day one as well. Um, we did have a little bit of lashes exposed here. The draping wasn't great. So that is something that definitely needs to be improved for this case. Uh, but... It went great, and he ended up seeing really well and doing really well in the post-operative period. And we're doing a little bit of radial tugging, a little hurricane technique to kind of get that uh, get that last little bit of cortex. And a little bit of polishing on the underside of that uh, anterior capsule. We'll try to clean that up a little bit. We have a nice circular capsular rexus, filling it up, filling the bag. Remember, fill the bag. Uh, and then inject. You can break the bag when you're injecting uh, uh, the IOL into the eye, so just be cognizant of that. Uh, don't be too aggressive and make sure you get that bag filled up. And again, not really using the Maloney there to dial it in, just putting it in the eye and then going in with the eye handpiece and getting that uh, residual cohesive viscoelastic out of the eye and centering it up. We get a decent overlap. I'm going to hydrate the wound, hydrate the roof of the incision like I like to do rather than... Uh, the sides, although I am actually doing the sides here too. I think town staff was um, on team side hydration, so we did a little side hydration there. Uh, came out really nicely, and patient was very happy. Nice white, quiet eye, and uh, looks good. So just like that, we are done with the case. Checking the pressure, burping it down a little bit. Uh, yeah, I don't like to see these patients with a pressure of 30 plus the next day. So I take a little extra time, make sure the pressure's good right here at the end of the case, and uh, you know, get it right. So so we're not dealing with uh, these headaches of having to burp the paracentesis on the post-operative day one. Um, you know. And I gauge that based off of the way the iris moves when I tap at the limbus. I'm not great with actually filling it and knowing the pressure. I'm just, my finger is not calibrated that way. Um, so I watch the way the iris moves as I tap the limbus, and that gives me a pretty good idea. And I can pretty much, you know, get people to a good pressure on post-operative day one. They're very rarely uh, at a high pressure, um, and they're not at a an overly low pressure. So uh, I've kind of gotten that to a good a good point. So done with the case. We're happy with it. Take that speculum out and we will send the patient on their way and see them tomorrow. Excellent case. Okay, I'm done. We did six cases. Uh, one had was COVID positive, so we couldn't do it. Another one had some was having some like irregularities on their EKG. So they anesthesia canceled that one, unfortunately. So we did six, last one went good, young patient, 39, super soft lens, zero CDEs on that case. So just aspirated it out basically. Uh, very pretty rexus um, on that one. So very good cases today. And tomorrow we will see them in the post-op clinic and we will um, see how everybody's doing. So it should be good. All topical cases today, so that was good. I haven't done that a ton, so it's good to practice and do a lot of topical cases. All right, guys, well, that wraps up the day. All the cataract cases went great. We did six cases, and the patients were all 20, 30 or better, minus the one patient who had a known macular hole that we were doing the cataract surgery for retina so they could go ahead and try to repair the macular hole. But cases went well. Everybody's cornea looked pretty good day one. There wasn't really much corneal edema, so I think doing these cases topical and more efficiently is helping a lot. And we have more cataract cases coming up. I'm gonna bring you guys along for more of the cases and show you more day in the lifestyle stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. I'm Zach with Dr. Eyeball MD, and I'll see you in the next one.